guy Shannon here with Got to Go Prepared. Thanks for watching. Just wanted to talk about a couple things in regards of going prepared uh, in lieu of the uh, active shooter situations and terrorist acts that have been going on that have now uh, kind of come to our shores. For people to be uh, aware of their surroundings and to be safe and some <clears throat> different ideas that I've thought about. One, if it's a serious situation, depending on your state you're in, of course you follow your local laws. If you can uh, carry concealed or, or carry a weapon with you and it's something that you believe in and, and you thought about, look into it, get your uh, concealed carry permit, and, and not just your permit and a, and a gun to carry with you for your own protection, your family's protection, but um, for your loved ones and people around you, get some uh, additional training besides what you do there. Go and, and get some training personally, do some training online, do anything and everything you can to prepare for those situations because those folks out in um, <clears throat> California were just at a, at a Christmas party and had no idea somebody was going to come in and start shooting them the way they did. Um, nor in any other situations where somebody just comes in and does that sort of thing. <clears throat> There's some different things you can do. And I've got a, a friend of mine who does a training course and actually goes around and, 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 and teaches uh, active shooter situations. And another friend of mine who's uh, SWAT certified who, who does similar things as well with the local local police. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some ideas. Uh, one, if be aware of your surroundings really two if you're in a place and you hear gunfire immediately lock and barricade the door of where you're at and and, and be ready and try to keep calm you, everybody's got a cell phone these days get on your cell phone immediately call law enforcement uh, call 911 get some help in there and, and barricade that door there's different things you can do you can use a little wedge that people use to prop open doors to slide into that door to protect it slide a desk in front of it, chairs in front of it uh, to, to make it e harder to get in. Um, if it's one of those uh, industrial type doors, and you, you know what I'm talking about, I don't know what it's called, but on the back of the door there's a big metal box and there's like a little arm, so when you open it, it kind of <laughs> does that number for the sake of uh, an example. But that little arm that sticks out, if you got a belt on, or some of the room's got a belt, wrap it around that tight, pull it tight. That'll help prevent that door from opening as well. Also, some things to think about. Get down behind things. Put as many things between you and an active shooter who may enter that room as possible to keep bullets from going through there or, or to hide to make them believe that they either can't enter that door or that there's no one in there. Um, some other things that I've been told by people who are a lot more knowledgeable than, than me. Um, when a door opens up, when a door opens, you got to think if someone's coming through that door when that door, whichever way that door opens is the first line of sight of what they're going to see. You don't want to be in that line of sight and be able to be shot. You need to be opposite of that line of sight. <clears throat> At that point is when you've got to fight because your life depends on it. Just hiding behind a desk, if they're not going to leave and they're going to go through there and look for you or someone, then it's time to fight and fight with everything you've got because your life depends on it and maybe the people around you as well. If their line of sight is in, in this way, and this is one example that I was as I was told about how to do, is this way, and you can be here. I mean, take something off the wall like a fire extinguisher if you don't have a weapon or anything to hit that person's arm and knock that gun down enough to stun them long enough to, for you to hit them and take the weapon away from them and get that away. Um, if you do have a concealed carry permit, you're protecting yourself, so... I think you're free and clear, and it would be self-defense that if that person come through the door, and they didn't see you, and you took them out, and God forbid you ever have to do that. But, you know, <clears throat> heard someone say, well, what about the, you get in trouble for killing somebody. Well, in self-defense, you're not going to be in trouble for that. And I look at it this way, I'd rather have 12 people on a jury say, hey, it was self-defense, than having six people carry me in a box because... I didn't do everything I could to protect myself or no, I didn't protect the person next to me and they're no longer with us because I didn't do anything. Whether it be a co-worker or a loved one. I don't think any of us want to go through that. Some other things. <clears throat> this is, I believe, a condor 
I'm not mistaken, briefcase. I carry this with me to work every day. It has different things in it from different times. This goes inside with me no matter where I go. And like I've mentioned on other videos, I am a CCW carrier and carry that everywhere that is legal to carry with me. Same goes for this. Um, in this briefcase, this strap comes off and this unzips and it has straps to make it into a backpack. So I can use this either way, which is really neat. I like it. It's padded. Feels great. Great padding here. Also, that you got a big main compartment. This is more of a computer pack bag briefcase. I keep different things in here from different catalogs and planners and things. It also has, if I can get this over to the camera and show you. Get some more in there. It's got a padded area here that closes off for a computer. It also has Velcro panel here. Because this bag is set up the, the Velcro panels, so you can Velcro other pouches to it if you need to, or a concealed carry holster. Also on this front panel right here, if it's in backpack mode, you have Molly. She can hook other pouches to that if you like. On this side, I call on job sites and stuff, so I actually have a Bostitch 35 foot tape in here. Great tape. Uh, if you ever break it, it's guaranteed for 100 years they'll replace it. I've taken them up on that once because I broke one. Uh, plugs for phones. I have a notepad in here. I won't dig all this stuff out. I'll go through this in a minute. I do keep this little tin in here with some preparedness items. I'll go through those in a minute. And we'll zip that back up. This pouch here, I've just got some other notepads and pen in it uh, and a set of headphones. This compartment here has this little tearaway. And you pull it down like this. And because I'm holding it, this it won't do it the same way. But if, if I was to have this wearing like a satchel like this, and I want to pull this down, you can see that kind of comes open. Inside this pouch here, I keep a pair of mechanics gloves and I keep a padded Uncle Mike's holster. I also keep a little flashlight. And a couple spare magazines. Because inside this is a Velcroed in, as you can see, holster. It didn't come with this bag. I bought it separately. Which would conceal my, one of my concealed carry firearms. That is a Glock 9mm Glock 26. Sometimes people, you're wearing a suit or you're wearing something that you might not be able to uh, carry your firearm, even can even you know tucked in a waistband or something like that. So it may be a good idea to have it in a briefcase. But I will tell you, if you do carry it in a briefcase, don't let this briefcase leave your side. You leave it with you, because the last thing you want to do is be somewhere, something go down, and your briefcase is in a different room. So people are not going to think of anything about you grabbing your briefcase when you go somewhere. Uh, because a lot of people keep wallets and different things in there and wouldn't want somebody to take it. Uh, I wouldn't feel odd carrying this to the bathroom with me if I had to go and hang it on the back of the stall. And now I have this. Another idea I'd had with this, and I think uh, AR-500, you can look them up. There's some different places that carry plates, ballistic plates, or target, even target plates, steel plates that you would drop in a plate carrier to protect from ballistics. And you buy the body armor. It's not just the the Kevlar, it's the extra plate for a higher, um, higher velocity rounds or rifle round. If you have the ability to get one of those plates, um, what would be a good idea 
and I was thinking about these kind of briefcases, there's a there's this pocket here, and there's also the pocket, another pocket. I have a little another little pocket right here, which I usually slide a catalog in there as well. But somewhere in one of these zippers of this bag or your briefcase, and I think they market these products out there already, but they're fairly expensive. So if you've already got a, a briefcase or a backpack or something you carry your computer in, if you're able to get one of those ballistic plates and slide it in here somewhere into one of those pockets. Now if something were to go down, God forbid, in your office or office party or wherever you're at, and you could grab your backpack, now you have something to hide behind or to protect your vital areas so you can get out and you can have this and you can get your firearm out you have something to protect you if there's nothing else around like a door or a, a desk or something I just thought it was a good idea that if you had access to a plate you could put it in the lining somewhere and have something protect your vital organs in that situation it's just an idea to throw out there uh, it could be this this backpack versus the uh, satchel, whatever you might have. Uh, some other ideas. In that backpack, I also carry a couple extra holsters for that gun. I, I have an ankle holster. I have an exterior Kydex holster. This is a different holster, too, you can use if you do have to tuck your shirt in. You, this goes inside the waistband. Your belt goes across here. Can you see that? And then this does this so you can tuck your shirt in. All you would do is pull your shirt up to get to your concealed carry weapon. Uh, you have to dress appropriate for that. Another idea for concealed carry, a lot of people, and these are just a few ideas. I don't know them all. These are some things that I, I've used um, for people that don't, I don't know how to carry. i got to wear a suit and tie. Or the hardest thing I think are ladies and wearing dresses and things, but there are things out there for ladies as well. I've looked at them for uh, the women in my life to see if there's things that they could use and ideas. Of course, there's purses and different things they can carry. Um, this is another option. This is a white spandex shirt made by 511 Tactical. You wear this as your undershirt, guys, and it has a padded Velcro thing here for your firearm here or here or you can put extra mags here as long as you don't have a real thick bulky firearm that small Glock would fit in here nice or if you had a small 380 Ruger or something like that would fit in here nice underneath your uh, dress shirt with the tie hanging down and your jacket if you take your jacket off and just your dress shirt was there it's it's totally concealed you wouldn't be able to see it what I'd recommend is the buddy the button behind the tie leave it unbuttoned your tie's covered and nobody can see it, but it gives you quick, easy access to be able to get to your uh, pistol in the case that you needed to. Those are just a few ideas of some things you can do from the ankle holsters to inside the waist, outside the waist, t-shirts, there's even leather ones like you see in the cop movies that you could wear, which are a little bit more uh, obvious if you had to take your jacket off, someone would be able to see it. Um, some people say, well, I don't know if my boss wants me to to carry a, a gun, well, don't tell your boss. Don't tell your buddies. Don't tell your coworkers that you have that on you. Keep it to yourself. Um, because when the shit hits the fan, if you're the one who has something to protect them, they're going to be thankful you had it. But if you go around telling everybody and the word gets out that you have it, and whether it be a disgruntled coworker or not, when they come in the door, you're the first one that's a target. Don't put the target on your back. You know, stay low key. Uh, you know, you be, be Batman or Clark Kent, you know, don't tell everybody that you have that on you. It's not their business. It's there for your protection, your loved one's protections, uh, and, and maybe your coworkers, and I hope that never happens. But in today's society with the radical Islamist uh, targeting Americans and targeting Christians, um, if you are into that banner and you're a Christian and you're an American, then there's a target on you from these radicals and we don't know who they are or what they look like they can look like anybody they can uh be anywhere um just you know be vigilant keep your eyes open be aware don't be afraid to say something if something's kind of 
you know, something going on fishy, I guess. Um, just, you know, look around all that kind of stuff and um, take care of yourself and your family. Don't take it for granted anymore. Uh, I don't think we can take it for granted anymore. And uh, not to get political, but this current administration is not even calling this what it is. These radicals that are after this not even identifying it. They're trying to say it's a workplace violence or uh, anything but what it really is. We, they're at war with us, and our administration is not willing to say that we're at war with them. Uh, there's too much PC BS going on, and it's 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 made it uh, very dangerous. We got to be PC and don't want to hurt anybody's feelings and coddle everybody and don't want to call a spade a spade, and uh, you know we. You got to you got to call the enemy what the enemy when it's the enemy. You got to identify it, and then you can do something about it. But until that administration changes over, and I pray we get someone in there who's uh, strong and willing to call it what it is, and then we can get this and be a little bit uh, safer in this world. But as I promised, I'm going to show you what's in this as well. This is a tin. You see, it's a fossil watch came in this tin, and on the Outside of this, I have just a piece of rubber electrical tape just to make it a little bit more um, watertight. Uh, not that it's waterproof by no means, and it looks like it's me proof because I'm having a trouble uh, getting it undone. Anyway, ah, there we go. I just peel this off and put that right there. Inside this little tin, I'm doing this uh, with the camera here, so I've got a table I can lay this out for you to see. I'm going to show you I, one item at a time and uh, go through them. I have a piece of aluminum foil, which, of course, you know can be used for lots of different things. A windscreen for your fire, uh, wrap food in it um, to cook in the, in, in the coals of a fire, uh, make a bowl, make a plate. A lot of things you can use with foil. I also have a large contractor's trash bag of course we know we can use this for a lot of different things as a raincoat we can stuff it with leaves and lose it as padding to to lay down on or debris or anything like that put things in it call it just multiple uses uh maybe in a environment where you're trying to hide and you don't have a way to fight and you just want to avoid the fight at the moment maybe you use this fill it up with stuff and use it to cover yourself in a pile of stuff to make it appear that there's nothing there but a bunch of bags of things and it's really concealing you there's an idea i can't give credit to who i seen that from because i can't remember but i did see it somewhere um also in this bag you know i'm gonna get all this out and i'll never get it back in there right <laughs> some gallon size ziploc bags for using any scavenging putting things in them water number of things they can use that for of course uh also in here i have a nine volt battery and there is some um, four alt steel wool here if you touch four alt steel wool to the two leads of course it will give you an ember where you can start a fire i have a one broken and one slightly bent these are trick birthday candles. These are the birthday candles that um, won't blow out. So if I can get those, one of these lit, then it would be hard for it to blow out while I'm getting a good fire started. I also have in here a little vial of Caramax, Carmax, Carmax, how do you say that? Um, with some cotton stuffed in the top of it to just as an additional fire starter lip balm and it's good for a lot of different things also have in here a small light this is a red light of course and it's one of these little keychain things you've seen them of course red in the dark if you're looking at something doesn't stand out quite as bad as a white light would if you're trying to stay uh, a little inconspicuous i also have in here a little taster's choice instant coffee a little caffeine have a some anybody younger might not know what this is is a film canister before digital cameras it was in rolls of film and in there is the four alt steel wool for to go with the battery to start a fire so of course i have that way to start a fire 
put the battery and I also have a pack of matches and in addition to that I have a small tea light candle or in a small confined area whether it be in my car uh, or in a closet or any small area and I need a little bit of light and a little bit of warmth that tea light candle of course the wax will be contained and I can light that and give me a little bit of light and maybe a minor amount of, of heat in a small confined area. I do have a little packet of Tylenol. I have a small button compass. Uh, this is a actually a large towel. It's a, can't remember what they're called, but you wet them and they open up into a pretty good size little uh, large washcloth hand towel size so you can clean up. Uh, sometimes it just feels good to have a towel just to wipe yourself off and clean clean up. I have some small gum. This gum came out of an MRE. Um, it's got that uh, artificial alcohol sugar in it as well. So if you've been eating <laughs> MREs, which <laughs> be rough on you sometime, that right there will actually help you uh, get things moving and make your breath smell good. Also, in addition to that, I have some 550 paracord. I have a seasoning salt packet. Some of these are come out of an MRE. I just tore it apart and used some different things out of it. And some iodized salt. Also have a small little knife in here. Now you're not going to baton wood with this. And this is a little Smith and Wesson. You come in a little. Uh, it's just cheap and expensive. But if you need to cut some cord, cut some small things, or even. Uh, if you got up and close and personal, it it could defend you could defend yourself with a small blade, uh, used in the right spots. Um, I hope none of you ever have to use it for that, but you could whittle a small stick points with that. Also have some bandages for first aid, a safety pin, and a flushable wipe. And then of course I have the the tin itself. I could use as a drinking cup and with some water boil it put my taster's choice instant coffee in there and actually have a little coffee to drink as well well um that's kind of some things i want to talk about there that's what i keep in that bat in that backpack i you know to protect myself uh in addition to that of course if you've seen some of the earlier videos uh I EDC this 511 tactical uh, bag which stays uh, it's I don't carry it inside places with me I have on occasion carried it inside somewhere with me and if you want to know everything that's in this just go back to one of my I think it's one of my first or second videos I ever did those contents in here a 511 tactical bag is awesome I've had this one for years and it's just bomb proof I mean it's just solid as rock and I keep it with me as well as the other EDC items that I actually carry on my person. It's winter time. Uh, this is a uh, North Face. And this is wool. And undershirt and pants, shoes. And I wear warmer socks this time of year. Um, I always have a jack an extra jacket, excuse me, in my car. Along with the other items that are in my truck that I mentioned on a previous video such as wool blankets and different things like that if I ever was stranded. But uh, those are things that I have, you know, this is on my person, is my first layer. Um, and if it's going to be a situation I'm not carrying that briefcase, of course your concealed carry uh, weapon should be on your person, and you should have extra magazines on your person as well. Uh, in addition, of course, a folding knife. I have a small flashlight that I keep on me as well which is the nine volt battery with the uh, block light, which gives me two or a full blown. Of course, the nine volt battery can be used to make fire with uh, some steel wool, which I also keep a little pack in my pocket as well. Uh, and my 550 core bracelet with my ferrocium rod striker here. So I have a way to get light, make a fire, cutting utensil and conceal carry weapon for my own personal protection on me in the first layer of defense with my clothing. And of course, I told you I keep a jacket with me at all times in the winter, never leave home without that as well. And I usually keep a cap in the car as well. 
Second layer would be my 550 tactical bag that I keep with me at all times. Uh, when I'm in the truck, if I get out of the truck and have to go very far or I'm going to be gone any period of time, I will take it with me. Or if I get out of my vehicle into someone else's vehicle, it goes with me. The next layer, especially when doing business, of course, is my Condor uh, briefcase slash uh, backpack with the things that are in here. If I needed to, I could strap that over my shoulder, dump the things I don't need out of here like catalogs and, and whatnot and throw some extra items in here from my truck if I needed to. And with the 10 I just showed you, I would have everything I needed to get by for a few days in the case of an extreme emergency. Um, just, uh, I don't know what else I can uh, add to this as far as going prepared. Uh, just be aware of your surroundings. Uh, you know, if you're older and you have kids, make sure your kids are aware and, 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 and you know where they're at all the time on their cell phones. Tell them little things that they can do to be aware of their surroundings or if they're in a situation at school or what have you, to, uh, how to hide uh, and how to uh, barricade a door and how to conceal themselves if there's an active shooter in a building where they're at until to uh, law enforcement can get to them and, and, and safely take care of them. Um, I think uh, both both of my uh, older daughters, um, they know how to they know how to shoot, handle their weapon. One of them's um, old enough to carry her own weapon now, and my other ones are, are not quite there yet. But they also know how to handle themselves. Uh, physically as well. I've, you know, uh, taught them martial arts and let them train with other people in martial arts so how to protect themselves that way. Um, you just can't, I can't say enough about doing things to prepare your, don't hide that stuff from your kids. I know folks who try to shelter the kid from all these things that are going on. Yes, they need to be happy and have a, a happy kid's life, but they need, still need to be aware that these things are going on in the world because I, I seen a uh, a little picture and it showed these uh, radical people in the Middle East who were out to kill us. Picture of their kids. Those kids are seven, eight, nine years old and know how to take an AK-47 and shoot it, load it, clear it, reload it, and shoot again. And we're over here teaching our kids that oh, guns are scary and bad, and let's don't say Christmas, let's say holiday, and uh, let's don't watch. Uh, you know, uh, an old war movie on TV because somebody got killed. It's do boo scary, and um, we're just making our, our kids weak. You don't need to scare them, but make them aware and teach them the proper way, and and teach them that guns aren't scary. Take them hunting, take them shooting. Start off with a BB gun and work work them up to it, and get them used to it. Um, there was a time in this country there was kids who they'd carry their their uh, hunting rifle, their 22 to school. And leave it in the vehicle or in the locker and get out of school and go hunting in the afternoons and no mass shootings happen i think a part of that is because they're taking god trying to take god out of school and um that's a problem we need to be strong in our faith as well um and and, and know that america is great uh it's the greatest country in the world and that uh this is a country that was founded on godly principles and know what the, what our uh, our founders, our forefathers uh, set this country up on and um, instill that into them. American exceptionalism. We are a great country. And if it wasn't for us in the past years and us having great generations before us who taught us the right things to do, we wouldn't be here to protect people uh, and, and to win like we have been winning in, in the past. And we got to get back on that kind of footing because... Uh, I think there's some bad things out there in the world and they seem to be coming after us and we need to be ready and be prepared. And uh, <laughs> that's my rant on that a little bit. I won't go any further on that. But uh, just remember folks, you got to go prepared every day because you just never know. And God bless America and pray every night for those folks that have lost loved ones in these situations. And remember to be prepared so that won't happen to you, hopefully.